I took all of these pictures in just 12 hours. Starting the morning off in Banff, somewhere a little bit different than usual. I've arrived into town probably an hour earlier than I need to to get a good sunrise. So I'm hoping to maximise the blue hour by photographing the Parks Administration building behind me. For me, this location works really well in winter. With the snow on the ground and then all the festive lights in the trees, there are a few good compositions to be had. I think I'll be using this path behind me as a bit of a leading line and then including both the trees and the building. I'm gonna wait maybe kind of 15 minutes for the light to come up a little bit and kind of give those blue tones, but we'll see if I get anything good and hopefully this will be a great start to the day. So I think I've just spotted another opportunity that isn't available during summer in the gardens here. You can see again that kind of fence full of festive lights and then you've got Banff Avenue and Cascade Mountain behind. So I think if I go a little bit higher, I'm going to get these lights in the foreground, some streaks down the road and then some cloud movement as well if I use like a long 30 second exposure. So I'm going to give that a go. I haven't got that long because I want to be at Vermilion Lakes when the sun actually comes up, which is probably in about half an hour. So I'll grab a couple here and then we'll shoot over to Vermilion. Number two of the day is Vermilion Lakes. Uh, you can see Mount Rundle just behind me here, but this lake is kind of the winter photography spot in Banff. It's a bit of a photographer's social club, so it's quite common you'll come down here and you'll see multiple photographers kind of lined up at these different little bits of open water. And the beauty of this lake is that because of the kind of thermal springs that run into the lake, there'll always be open ice, and that open ice kind of changes shape throughout the year. So whenever you come down, you can normally get a bit of a different composition. So I'm gonna pop down to the lake, get some shots using the reflection in this little bit of open water you might better see just down here. Uh, we'll grab a couple shots here and then run on to the next spot. So as always, had to get the shot of Banff Avenue. Um, unfortunately now, unlike in the summer, the road is now open to cars. So you actually get quite a lot of vehicles driving up and down. But as we haven't got the opportunity to photograph all those flowers that I did in that last video, um, I've just come straight to the end and started shooting with that 70 mil lens to get that panorama. But let me show you. Heading back down to the Parks Canada building now, uh, just opposite Cascade. <laughs> I barely slept last night. I've just come off of um, night shifts for work actually, so I'm still adjusting. I think I probably had about an hour's sleep. And I think because of that, I'm so tired that this video is not particularly visually interesting at the moment. And I'm being really slow getting between the locations, so the light's already pretty harsh. But we'll carry on and see what we can find. Here's a bit of B-roll of me walking through a gate to spice things up a bit. So you might recognise this location from the summer version of this video. Uh, and I'll actually link that video below if you do want to check that one out. But the thing is in winter this location really changes. So in summer this is a pond full of water and it's surrounded by flowers. However now it's full of snow and it actually opens up this kind of stone circle that's at the bottom of the pond. You can also see this kind of cube behind me here, which is part of the Christmas light installation. So I'm going to use those two things to get a slightly different shot with a new foreground interest.
popped around to the back of the Parks Canada building where that building lines up really nicely with the mountain. Sorry, this is another location I was at in the summer version of this video, but I promise you this is the last one. But I can't resist getting this shot. You can't really see it behind me because I'm exposed for myself and I'm in the shade. But let me show you the shot I'm gonna go for on a longer lens. You can kind of see from this how well Cascade Mountain lines up with the building. <laughs> So as you can see, the light is now getting pretty harsh, but I'm pretty happy with some of those pictures I got this morning. And I do have some great locations in mind to shoot during the day and also sunset and twilight. So I'm looking forward to doing those. But for the next few hours, I think photography is on hold. And whilst I'm here, I feel like I might as well get the snowboard out and get a few laps in. So the Johnson's Canyon Trail is a great option to come and photograph during the middle of the day, during winter. The whole trail is in a canyon, so it's in shade and not affected by the kind of harsh midday sun. So there's some great long exposure opportunities on the trail as well, but because it's in the shade, it doesn't mean it's pretty icy. So I would 100% recommend bringing a pair of cleats. You can rent these in Banff, or they're not overly expensive to buy, but they really are a must. The Johnston's Canyon Trail is an easy five kilometer return hike. The walk takes you along walkways that hug the cliffside, taking in the plummeting canyon, ice cold rivers, spectacular views, and of course, frozen waterfalls. So unfortunately, half the trail was closed today, so I couldn't go up to the falls a bit further up. So I got a quick snap of the lower falls here. It's a great little area to explore and there's lots of details in the canyon of kind of ice formations and running water that I think if you spent some time exploring, you could really find some kind of more minimalist compositions, but I haven't got enough time for that today. I'm gonna to head off to another location for sunset. Yeah, so I lied. I couldn't resist trying my best to capture some of the more close-up details of all the frozen formations on the way back. This however is no means my forte, so do let me know what you think in the comments. And here I am again, passing through a gate. Um, be sure to subscribe for more gate passing content. Are we on location number four or five? I'm not, I'm not really sure, but this is Castle Mountain. This is by far one of the best sunset spots in Banff. There are very few mountains really that get really good light at sunset here. Most locations really are sunrise spots, but as you can see, this mountain does catch the light beautifully. What I would recommend though, if you're visiting this location is you actually need to get here maybe like an hour before sunset, really at the very start of golden hour, because that's when the light's gonna hit the mountains before it dips below the peaks on the opposite side. Even though it's stunning, this is definitely one of those locations that I always really struggle with. Castle Mountain is so dominating and impressive, yet to get some foreground in, you have to shoot quite wide, and then you kind of shrink the mountain in the process. So it's really difficult to kind of get over the grandeur of the mountain, whilst also making the picture a little bit more dynamic than just a straight up photograph of the mountain alone. As you can see, there's plenty of kind of broken up ice and rocks and reflection pools to kind of work with for foreground. So I'm gonna have a bit of a scope out and see if I can find anything good. Um, and if they are good, I'll pop them up on screen for you. This was probably the best shot that I got from that evening. I don't hate it, but by no means do I love it. To be honest, I find this location really frustrating. 
Like it is so incredible whilst you're here and to the eye it's just stunning, but I can just never make an image work. Like you have this river running through and all this broken up ice, rocks on the ground, but I just can't link the mountain to a foreground to kind of link it into its environment. And I never really walk away with a picture that I'm 100% happy with. However, luckily I do know there is another location to photograph this mountain from just down the road, which is a lot simpler to get a good shot from. So shooting Castle Mountain from the road here is probably one of the easiest shots you're gonna get in the Canadian Rockies. For sunset, the light hits the mountain perfectly and the road just leads your eye perfectly towards it. It really is a simple composition and I would recommend popping on like a 70 mil lens, shooting portrait and you're good to go. This composition is honestly just so obvious that it's really the conditions of the day that dictate the outcome of your shot. Now for my last shot of the day, I'm up at the Mount Norquay lookout. You can kind of just see the town of Banff below me and Mount Rundle behind me as well. Um, it's just halfway up the kind of Mount Norquay access road on the way to the ski hill. But the plan is for this shot is to leave the camera in place, do some long exposures of the clouds and then wait for the lights to come on in town below. Um, that will mean standing in the cold for a little bit, but hopefully it will be worth it. And after this, I'm gonna wrap it up and probably go to sleep. <laughs> so ending the night with the heater blasting in the car, like it's surprising how cold you get, especially your toes, when you're just standing on snow and waiting for the light to change. But it's been about 10 or 12 hours I've spent in Banff today, just taking different pictures. And I think I've got maybe 10 or 12 half decent images. And I really like making these videos. It's a great challenge to kind of go to locations where maybe light isn't perfect and just to see what you can get and what you can make of the situation you're in. If you'd like to see more content like this or more about the Canadian Rockies, like where to hike and where to photograph, then please do subscribe. I really appreciate it and it really motivates me to make more content. I'll see you on the next one.